on up, Nina. We are so excited to hear what you have to say about accepting. Hey, everyone. It's so nice to um, see that manifesto when you're new to the group and feel welcomed. So I already like the energy of this crowd. I'm so happy to be here. Super excited to be here. Also a little nervous. So I'll work through that. I'll work through that maybe in the, the next 30 seconds or so. I want to give a heartfelt thank you to my great pal, Vanessa Lewis. She's sitting back there. Who, yeah, she's right back there. Who randomly threw my hat in the ring uh, to do this. And I was kind of taken off guard by it because we used to work together. We've always loved each other. Um, but I thought it was so cool that she thought of me for this theme. Uh, because it's not like I'm coming all the time. Now, I, I didn't even know about it. Now I'll come more often because I only live eight minutes away. So especially if you're at the art gym. I didn't even know the art gym existed. So I just wanted to say on the theme of acceptance, it sure is nice to be seen, isn't it? It is. So, y'all ready for this? So acceptance. I wanna start out just with your take. Just pop it out for me. What's maybe one word, one or two words that comes to mind for you when you think of acceptance? Just throw it out. Okay, thank you. Okay. What was that, patience? Okay. Self-awareness. You hearing this? Imperfection. Freedom. What was that? Empathy, okay. Impermanence. All right. Resignation, peace, understanding, surrender, death. Any more? It's hard. Yes, it can be. Thank you for being truthful. <laughs> It is, all these things, all these things have two sides to the coin, everything that was just thrown out just now. So when I first met with uh, Dave and Brandy, they asked me, so how are you gonna um, approach this theme? And I immediately went to how I often approach this theme when I work with teams, I do a lot of work in the corporate world, and acceptance is a theme. And so my mind went straight to where we often go, which is, well, you gotta accept what is. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes it's hard to address a truth. Sometimes it's hard to be in the presence of someone who disagrees with you. And that's what helps us uh, to work better with one another. And I could tell as I was talking about this, they were sort of like, like this had been heard before. And honestly, I was underwhelmed too, with my own words, because I could sense I was keeping the theme out here. I wasn't pulling it in. I wasn't making it matter to me. So I thought after that, you know what? I better think on this a little bit more. Maybe something will come to me. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. It works a lot in the work I do. It's really useful. It's useful to think of acceptance in this way, looking into different perspectives, accepting what is. And I knew that something would come to me to pull it inside. So I sat with it and I decided as I was sitting with it that I would do what any smart, resourceful, professional person would do and um, I decided to ask my 11-year-old son. And I asked him, hey, Keaton, what comes up for you when you think of the word acceptance? And without any hesitation whatsoever, he immediately said, acceptance is to be a part of something. So I decided to validate my findings, you see, because I'm resourceful, 
professional, smart, so I better validate this, right? So in order to do that, I didn't go to AI, although I've heard a lot about AI from Kyle. <laughs> next time I might go to AI, now that I know a little bit more about it. I decided to do the next wisest thing. And I went and I asked my nine-year-old son. I said, hey, Vaughn, what comes to mind for you when you think of acceptance? And at first he looked at me and said, mom, are you trying to coach me again? <laughs> and I was like, no, I really, I really want to know. I need help. I need your help. What comes to mind to you when you think of acceptance? And he said, I feel accepted when I feel included. So this was all starting to come together for me. This was making sense. Being a part of something, feeling included. So I was like, okay, I need to be super, super diligent here. I'm going to ask one more expert. So I went to Roger, my dog, and I was like, hey, Roger, you know, what do you think about acceptance? And he seriously gave me this look like, how could you humans not understand? I mean, you are overcomplicating pretty much everything, and I'm going back to sleep. So he went back and he took his nap wisely. So all at once, it hit me like a lightning bolt. Here I was coming in, wanting to do this talk for you, asking Dave and Brandy questions like, well, what's the audience like? Who are they? What do you think they want to hear, right? And it dawned on me that all I wanted to experience as I showed up to do this talk with you was acceptance. Your acceptance, actually. I wanted to feel acceptance from you, which is why I was probably overthinking it. We all do this a bit, right? We can all relate to this. Whether I wanted to admit it or not, my thought process was going towards how can I gain acceptance. So I'm going to pause here and just ask, how am I doing? Okay, okay. Just, just to validate some of my fears here, you know, just, just to make that even more true. So I have another question for you. When you think of acceptance, of being accepted, what emotions come up for you? Feelings or emotions? Feelings in the body or emotions? Just pop it out. Bittersweet release. All right. Release. Bittersweet, he says. What else? What was that? Grief. All right. Safety. Fear. Being seen. Relaxation. The past. Okay. And how do you feel when you think about the past? Okay. So I wonder, because I'm hearing a lot of different answers here. I'm hearing answers like peace, relaxation, safety. And then I'm hearing things like fear or um, grief. All range of emotions which are super important. All emotions which are super valid. And I wonder if the experience of actual acceptance, which for me is peaceful, safety, tranquility, is a little bit different than this. Another question for you. What comes up when you, seek, when you, when you think of yourself seeking acceptance from others? Stress, anxiety, judgment. Yeah, yeah, doubt I hear. What else? Frantic, heart races, vulnerability, validation. Yes, people pleasing. Who can relate to that one? So 
Oh, look, look at process there. <laughs> That's creative, isn't it? <laughs> so isn't it interesting how what we desire, in my case at least, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pull this into me, what I desire, uh, my definition of what acceptance is when I'm being it, when I'm experiencing it, is relaxing, peace, tranquil, tranquil, but the process of it can sometimes feel anxious or nervous. Two different things. I'm coming to the realization, and maybe many of you are too, that um, achieving acceptance out there, outside of us, actually involves a reconciliation of some conflicting emotions that we have in here, inside. And as with most things, acceptance starts with us. Acceptance starts with self-acceptance. And as my pal over here pointed out earlier, that ain't always pretty. It's not always easy, that self-acceptance. So let's get back to my two sons' definitions of acceptance which are essentially the ideas of belonging and inclusion. These are things that most of us could easily admit are nice to experience. Am I off there? You'd agree, right? Feels good to feel like you're a part of something. Who's ever seen this? Anyone seen this before? Yeah? Of course you have, my pal over here who I met earlier. The difference between fitting in and belonging. Just take a moment and take a look at it. Think about how it feels when you're trying to fit in. I'm excited. Yeah. Do you want to do that with the microphone? <laughs> What's that? You want to give that, make that a little clear? Thank you. Yeah, that, we don't need any more words, do we? We don't. I think you just described it perfectly. Okay, I'd love to hear if you're willing to give me sound effects for this part. How does it feel when you belong, when you're accepted simply because you're showing up as you? Yeah, yeah. You're not trying to meet anyone's expectation. You're not trying to be someone you're not. You're just showing up with you as you. And when that's accepted, it feels pretty darn good, doesn't it? When you can just show up as you and not overthink it. Vastly different feelings. Somewhat similar too, right? To what it feels like to actually belong versus trying to belong. I love this quote by Emerson, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. I think that is so true. The world is often trying to mold us into something that we're not, and we buy into it, hook, line, and sinker. The truth is, in order to feel acceptance, you have to be willing to face some uncomfortable feelings of not being accepted. You might not be accepted. Because when you're truly yourself, not everyone is going to accept you. And that's 100% okay. You know why? Hey, I'm about to say something really profound here, all right? It's probably the most profound thing that I'm gonna say today. You ready for it? Because not everyone's your peep. Mic drop. <laughs> I'm crediting Michelle Voss, who's a lead trainer through IPAC. I'm a lead trainer for them now. She was my trainer when I was going through that program. And out of the 90 hours I spent with this woman, this, this is something that so sunk in with me, probably because of where I was at that stage of my life. But I think this is so true. And if we can accept this, it can be so liberating. True acceptance of this concept is the key 
to self-acceptance and in turn helping you feel like you belong. So how do I know how? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my own battles with self-acceptance. I'm gonna start out with a topic that once again is pretty complicated because at this point you can see my thought process is very complicated. And we're gonna talk about something, I'm not sure if you can all relate to this actually. Dating! Let's talk about dating. I think we can all relate to dating. No? Yeah? I'm getting some nods. Thanks, man. It's always good when you have like that nodder in the crowd who's with you. Yes. <laughs> whether dating intimately, whether meeting new friends, professional, there's really dating, sizing each other up, involved job interviews. We all know what it feels like to either be sized up or to size someone else up. We all do it. We don't always want to admit that we do it, but we do do it. So here's me at the age of around 31, around 2008, the year I met my husband. By the way, it's my birthday tomorrow. I'm going to be 46. Just saying. Yeah. Why don't you come on up here and just finish the talk? Thank you. So this was a peak year of self-acceptance for me, and I believe it's actually why I met my husband, who I believe is my soulmate. That was such, such a lucky find for me. So in order to understand why this was such a big year for me, you have to understand who I was before then. Throughout my 20s, I was looking to the world to make me feel whole. It was like, here was me, and there was half of everyone else, and I would look for things, latch on for things to kind of make me feel like I belonged out there, right? So I'd look to friends, and I'd wonder, yeah, how do I reflect upon these people? How do they reflect upon me? You know, is this cool? Do I fit in? I'd look to boyfriends and think, you know, what does it mean about me if I'm together with this person how do they reflect upon me? How do I reflect upon them? Am I good enough? Uh, I'd look at jobs and I'd wonder, what does this job mean about whether I'm successful or not successful? Am I successful if I have this job? Common denominator in my thinking was me, 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 me. It was like it was me against the world. And my version of me felt very separate. Actually, it was like I was existing in a world that really was outside of myself. And sometimes I felt like the world was against me. Anyone ever feel that way? Like the world is really trying to make you angry. Or the, the world is trying to knock you down. The world's trying to make it hard. So many of you might say, well, you know, we all do this a little bit. And I think that we do. But I think we actually don't do it just a little bit. I think we all do it a lot. I don't think we all stop and think how much we do this. We think that we're somehow separate from the world outside of us, not as much included. And the only issue with seeking self-acceptance from the world around us is that we can't control the world around us, right? Like you can't control the weather. We don't know what the weather is gonna be like today. You can't control whether or not the person you love is going to love you back. You can't control whether or not that friend who you're loyal to is going to be loyal back. You can't necessarily control if the colleagues that you're attached to are as attached to you and are going to stick around. You can't control whether or not the job is going to continue to need you or not, even if you need it. Can we all accept that the world is a dynamic place? So seeking acceptance from the world outside is like trying to control an ocean. And this is how I felt in my 20s. I felt baffled that some of the guys who I thought might complete me 
often rejected me. I felt confused that some of the friends I chose didn't actually accept me. They accepted my mask. Deflated when the jobs I thought would make me feel important actually drained me a lot. I felt like I was in a giant, stormy sea of swells, getting toppled over, swell after swell, by the whims and desires of everyone but me. And nobody knew what I actually wanted because I was too busy trying to figure out what everyone else wanted, trying to fit in, trying to be just like them. And because of this, I didn't even know what I wanted. I was too accustomed to that role of figuring out how I could fit in. I love this quote also by Jim Rohn. If you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned? Not much. So after enough experiences of getting toppled around by my desire to make everyone else's desires work, and fit in, I decided that there was nothing else to lose anymore by just being fully myself. I had experienced enough rejections. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. So I found in that year, I would say, my tall, quirky, sometimes funny, I would say very goofy, Let's just say awesome, awesome self, okay? And the mask came off. I learned a great concept by Bruce D. Schneider. He's the founder of IPEC, and that's a school that um, I train for, actually. It's a coaching program, and I do some training for them now. And the concept is about masks. And one of the cool things to think about with masks is that if we choose to wear one in order to fit in, we'll find that we attract a lot of people who love the mask. But that can be a little difficult, especially in those inevitable times if we hit a challenge or a bump in a road and the mask falls off, and now suddenly, boop, you're not liked anymore. You're not accepted anymore. The beautiful thing about taking that mask off and just not trying to fit in just being you, just bringing your full self to the table, is then suddenly you draw people in who like what's beneath the mask. And it sticks around because you don't have to put a mask on. Those people are friends, partners, lovers for a lifetime. Ditching the mask takes a lot of courage, though because it does require the full acceptance of the fact that some people are actually not going to accept you. And I would say it requires even more courage for groups that feel marginalized, because then we're trying to work within worlds that have different norms. Let that sink in. The great irony of acceptance is that trying to achieve acceptance without also accepting the possibility of non-acceptance is like expecting a faucet to flow fully when you're unwilling to release all the water in the valve, the hot water and the cold water. And our emotions are like water molecules. All emotions are worthy emotions. And we often need to be open to experiencing the painful ones, what it feels like to try and fit in even, in order to let the satisfying ones flow too. Self-acceptance happens when we stop expecting the world outside of us to make us whole. Accepting that the best relationships are formed when you bring your whole self to the table. You being you regardless 
of where you are. Accepting that some people are going to love you and some people inevitably won't. Sometimes even those closest to you won't. That's just a fact. And that can be one of those painful ones. Being you because it gives other people permission to bring their whole selves to the world. And when you relinquish the pressure of making others complete you, making others feel like they need to make you feel whole, you step into your whole self and all its beauty on your own, relinquishing the need to fit in or thinking that others complete you. Can we get that sound again? Complete. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Needed that. We build something even greater when we bring our whole selves to the table. And it's something called us, we. It's not about me, 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 me anymore. It's about look at my beautiful self, look at your beautiful self. Let's create something. That's creativity, isn't it? Creativity doesn't come from fitting in, conforming. Creativity comes from different ideas. It comes from allowing others to express and be unique. Full acceptance is to step in the glory of who you are now and also who you're becoming. Acceptance is free of expectation and conformity. It's the definition, in my opinion, of inclusion. You get to be you, I get to be me. And we create some amazing things in that, in that manner. Together, we make up this beautiful, very different world, which makes it fun to travel, right? It wouldn't be fun to travel if we were all the same. Full acceptance is to step into the glory of who you are now and learning to be myself is what helped me actually start to see people and places and situations, jobs that made me feel like I belonged to bring it back full circle. To make me feel like I was accepted, like I was included. And I believe that this was caused by the acceptance, the self-acceptance of non-acceptance. Enough experiences of rejection Maybe some experiences of ejection from jobs that belong to other people, not really my skill sets. Even sometimes separation from people, those who are closest to me. Again, sometimes confronting that non-acceptance helps us get inside and really experience what acceptance is versus keeping it out there. When I did this, the mask came off. It became just easier to step into myself and learn more about myself. Self-acceptance is the apex when we take off that mask. That's, that's when it really, really becomes illuminating inside. And at that point, we meet our true destiny at this apex of self-acceptance. We meet the people, we find the places, the things that make us feel like we belong. And then we realize that our presence actually really matters, at least within the realm of those that matter to us. So full circle back to meeting this guy in 2008, the year the mask came off, the year I would say uh, I learned what self-acceptance was, big year for me. Ultimately leading to me feeling included, to me feeling like I belonged. We met in 2008, 
We got married in 2009. This picture wasn't necessarily accepted from many people in my life. (laughs) Not everyone's your peep. This is us eloping. And the rest is history. In the making, that is, because this never ends. This journey of acceptance, of self-acceptance. You continue to learn about yourself. Life is created. Wow, though, does it feel good to belong? Even in our little microcosmos, even just in our little pockets and places, that sense of belonging fills our heart. It enables us to bring ourselves to other spheres as a whole. I'd like to thank this guy for helping me with my speech today. I'd also like to thank this guy because if it wasn't for their honest and pure responses to my question, I think today would have felt a little bit more contrived. I would have brought you some cool things, trust me. I've got a plethora, a whole treasure chest of team building activities, all that stuff. And at the same time, it would have felt a little bit more contrived. I wouldn't have been bringing more of myself, my whole self to the table or be coming from a place of true self-acceptance, a place inside myself where I'm really truly to share, I'm willing to share more of me uh, versus bringing you what I think you expect of me, trying to fit in. I prefer today and every day if I can remember it because I don't always, I prefer to really seek true self-acceptance because that's when I know I truly belong. Acceptance.